Let me introduce you to the mechanics of what should happen at each joint while you run. I've simplified this over the years, but this is really what it comes down to. You should think about muscles as short or long levers that can affect joint orientation and the directional forces at each joint. This directly affects our movement patterns. Focused functional strengthening or technique drills only help when there's a good lever or muscle length balance around each joint. Distance running is all about movement quality and efficiency. So keep this in mind while we discuss the important joints. This is just a basic diagram to understand uh, during foot strike what should be happening at each joint. Um, your hip basically is the joint that needs to generate power in, in a force direction that's slightly upwards and forwards. The primary function of your knee is simply to absorb shock and the ankle and foot is there to form a stable base. First is your hips. The hip is the primary joint to propel us forwards while we run. That is its main function and it should also be your primary focus while running. Pushing down from the hip to create a force that will push you forward and upward. Gluteus maximus is responsible for this force, making it the most important mover as well as stabilizer at the hip joint. Lifting the opposite knee happens automatically. Muscle imbalances around the hips and pelvis are also the primary cause of injuries lower down the leg. These imbalances develop for various reasons like long hours of sitting or from different sports like swimming or ballet that follow different movement lines. Your pelvis and lower back should form a stable base from which your hips can direct a force in a straight line. Running is very much a straight line movement but the hip is a multi-directional joint. The muscles we call stabilizers should help to maintain this straight line but if they become overactive or shortened, they can pull the femur out of the straight line. It is therefore very important to strengthen stabilizers in a functional way, if at all. Hours spent strengthening stabilizers by someone who does not know what they are doing can do more harm than good. Next, let's look at the knee. The primary function of the knee is really to absorb shock. Each time your foot strikes while running, your leg has to carry about two and a half times your body weight. The knee is built to absorb shock. A knee that bends sufficiently during foot strike is therefore vital. So what can prevent the knee from doing its job? Overstriding by putting your foot down in front of your center of gravity or excess, excessive heel strike. These two often go together and cause a high load on your kneecap or patella. While overstriding, the knee is more straight at foot strike and two other areas are then forced to absorb more shock your foot through excessive pronation and your hip through excessive tilt. A bent knee at foot strike also creates leverage for your hip and gluteals to do their job. Let me show you the difference. Okay, so just to show you how a bent knee creates leverage for your hip, I suggest you get up and, and try it yourself. Um, when my foot strikes and my knee is bent, there's a lot of movement and, and movement potential from my hip. Running is basically a repetition of single leg squats. So from here, I can generate a lot of force from my hip to move forward. However, if I land with a relatively straight knee or with my heel on the ground, my knee tends to be straighter. And <clears throat> during that movement, I first have to get my center of gravity over my foot. And from there, I actually have to generate a lot of force from my ankle and calf to go forward. Um, rather than be, be able to use my, my hip as, as the primary lever to propel me forwards. A good test is to run barefoot on a hard surface and see how well your knees are able to absorb shock. Now let's look at the function of the ankle and foot while you're running. Your feet have many joints, but I'll discuss the ankle and foot as a unit. Its primary function is to form a stable base of support and to provide feedback to your brain about the surface you're running on. This feedback mechan mechanism is called proprioception 
and the feet forward response from the brain then allows the foot and ankle to make adjustments so that your legs can continue pushing you in the right direction. The reasoning behind midfoot strike being the optimal position for your foot to be in uh, when you strike the ground while running is quite obvious. When my whole foot makes contact with the ground, I'm so much more stable than when I'm on my heel or on my forefoot, both being much smaller surfaces. And we tend to then make compensatory movements through pronation of the foot or making compensation at the knee or at the hip for uh, striking on a more unstable surface than on your midfoot. There are factors that could limit the foot to perform these functions efficiently. Decreased ankle dorsiflexion or range of pulling up as well as poor proprioception or balance. Both of these factors will lead to excessive pronation. Dorsiflexion is simply the movement where your ankle and foot moves up. The reason why limited dorsiflexion can affect your running stride is because <clears throat> when you strike the ground and, and your foot can, does not allow sufficient movement downwards, you don't have uh, an optimal leverage for your, for your hip. So to create leverage, we tend to then roll in, and as you can see, the knee drops in as well, to still have some leverage for the hip. This, however, can lead to numerous injuries. Pronation, or the arch of the foot flattening slightly during foot strike, is a normal movement, but too much pronation can lead to various injuries. During running, a midfoot strike is optimal, since it is the most stable base of support and allows optimal weight distribution over the whole foot. There should be very little conscious push-off from the ankle during distance running, since the calf does not have nearly the leverage of en or endurance of the gluteals at your hip. Having genetic differences like flat feet or high arches is like being either short or tall. It makes no difference and might only have an effect uh, in your choice of footwear.